morning, everyone. So I'm Lee Hui, and uh, I guess probably some of you may not be aware that I, I will be here. But as a statistician, you, you should always expect a random variable in the, in the or a random noise in your model. So Joe, today Joe is X beta, and I'm Y. <laughs> so I'm going to present uh, a new package that we have been working on named. No, it's <laughs> 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 So just, I want to know how much uh, you know about HTML and JavaScript or CSS, things like that. But I, I don't want you to, to show your hands. I just want you to look at a few pictures. <laughs> HTML. <laughs> body, body. JavaScript. Body. <laughs> 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 Slides and you can go back and watch that video. It's really fun. <laughs> JavaScript. Uh -huh, done. Yeah, we have a, a t shirt on, on our website. You can, if you want, you can, you can buy one. <laughs> so that's background checking. I heard people laughing, so <laughs> since your background is enough, let's talk. So before HTML widgets, if you want to use JavaScript libraries in R, in the R Markdown or in Shiny, you would go through the, uh, the steps like this. And probably you heard a nice JavaScript library from your colleagues, and then you go to this documentation, read documentation, and then you include these uh, JavaScript files in your like R Markdown files or HTML files using the script tag, and then include some CSS files, and then you go to the documentation of R Markdown and see how to include all these files into the R Markdown documents, and then you prepare data in R. Uh, sometimes it's JSON, or sometimes it's XML, or things like that. So you have to use a couple of R packages. And finally, you, use, uh, you write some uh, JavaScript code uh, in that document, and there are just so many steps to go through. And uh, some people may, may be curious and go back and go, <coughs> go home and try these JavaScript libraries. <laughs> they, may, they may be scared a little bit, and some may just quietly just give up. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to use the awesome JavaScript libraries with very low cost. <laughs> so I have some information for developers and users. So if you are a developer, you want to develop uh, an HTML widget. So it, this is what you need. So you can either uh, install the HTML widgets from CRAN, or if you want to try the develop development version, is on GitHub, and we have full documentation for that package um, at this website, htmlwidgets.org. So if you're a user, you don't care about the development, so you can use some existing widget packages that we have been uh, developing. For example, the digraphs package for uh, Graphing the time series data and the DT package for uh, uh, displaying your data using the JavaScript library data tables. And I will show you examples later on leaflet package for leaflet maps, network D3 for uh, using uh, the JavaScript library D3 to draw network <coughs> and network graphs. And also R3JS, R3 that's for the uh, 3D scatter plots and uh, flow using WebGL. And uh, also we have uh, metrics graphics for drawing uh, D3 scatter plots, lines, and bars. And the usage is pretty simple. So once you've got a widget package, you just call this function. Like you can either do that in, in the normal R console, just call that function with some data. And R, if you use that in R Studio, R Studio will just display your like data in the R Studio view. If you don't use R Studio, uh, R will just open a web browser to display that JavaScript library. And what's 
more interesting is that you can uh, also use these widget packages in R Markdown. So if you are familiar with R Markdown, so here is just a, uh, an R Markdown code chunk. So you can just write this code chunk and you can control the size of the widgets and using the figure.width, figure.find. And uh, so as long as the output is HTML, for example, it is either an HTML document or HTML presentation, like what I'm using here, uh, as long as the output is, is HTML, the widget will just work. And some of you may, may ask, well, what about LaTeX? If you ask that question, we cannot be friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's HTML widgets, it's not LaTeX widgets. <laughs> so, and the, an even more interesting feature about these widgets patches is that you can also use these widgets in Shiny. So, uh, for most of these patches, you can find a, a function like the full output, for example, leaflet output or uh, data table output. Uh, you can use that in, 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 uh, in the UI, and uh, you can use render something, like render data table, render leaflet in, in the server logic. So that's how you can call uh, or use these widgets in, in Shiny. And just a couple of quick examples to show you what we have got. So the first one is the uh, diagraphs package. So you've got, you have got the uh, data set sunspots in base R. You just pass that time series data to the function diagraph in the diagraphs package. And uh, you will see uh, the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript visualization using the uh, library diagraphs. So you, for example, we can add a range selector to this graph so that this now, this graph is actually interactive. You can select a, stop, a range of data to, to zoom in or zoom out. So, I guess probably everybody knows the secret about this sunspot state preset, right? If you, if you use a different aspect ratio, you will see there. If you just look at the, the, the big plot here, you probably don't see anything other than the, the period. But if you look, look at the small, <laughs> plot at the bottom, you will see that the number of sunspots increases more rapidly than it decreases. Right? Um, less rapidly, it decreases, uh, it increases more rapidly, yes. Yeah, so the, the, the trend is uh, different when it increases or decreases. And then you can also have multiple time series, like we <coughs> combine two columns or two time series data into uh, like a, a matrix, then we can plot these two time series, and we'll, then it will show the legend over there, the male deaths, and the female deaths, and uh, you can add some other components to the to the graphs, like annotations. For example, you can uh, add a text to a certain point, uh, saying that okay, here is a, an interesting point or something like that. So that's the digraphs package for time series. And we have, we have also got the DT package for data tables. So why should we use the data tables? The, the, there are many nice things about data tables. So the first is that you can actually display your data using multiple pages. So here's, that's why I wrote the pro tip here. R, R is not sense. You don't want hundreds of pages of tables from, from R. Right? You, you should arrange them in multiple pages. So. And you can also sort all these columns, and you can actually also search in this uh, in this table. So that's uh, a very interesting JavaScript library. And what this DT package also provides is that you can format your columns using, for example, suppose the the first three columns are just currency, dollars, or euros, and the, the fourth column is just uh, percentages, the uh, last column is you, you want to run these numbers to three uh, digits after the decimal point. So you can just call these uh, built in functions in the DT package like format currency, format percentage, format run. So that's very easy to customize the uh, format of your data table. And also the network D3 package. So that data set is from the uh, Mr. Hugo's uh, model, uh, less miserable. So that shows the 
connection uh, among the characters. So, so this package allows you to draw a net network graph like this. So, and even even if you don't under you, you have not never read this novel, you you probably will be sitting here just just dragging this plot randomly. <laughs> 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 And uh, also we have 3JS, that's a JavaScript library for WebGL uh, graphics. So this is just a very a quick example of showing the, uh, the population of some cities. So you can see the code is very, very simple. It's basically a, a single line of call to the function flow JS. Then using a background image and uh, we have some latitudes and longitudes and then plot the values of the population. So this is interactive. You can just rotate this globe or zoom in, zoom out. So, you can so that's what you can do with 3JS. Lift that maps. So to create a lift that map, you load the lift that package and uh, create a lift that object and then keep on adding different layers to, to that map. For example, here is just an empty map. We created that from lift that, then type that object into an add tiles. So we just add um, an open street map tile. So it's just a just a, an empty map, and we can also add some uh, circles or points or polygons and lines by using the latitudes and longitudes uh, arguments. We can, we can specify different sizes. I apologize for this silly example, Arnold 100. <laughs> and I will explain why I use that example. So we can add uh, graphical elements to that uh, map. And here's a, a map of the Chicago O'Hare Airport. That's the, that was the flight that I took yesterday. And I was stuck in that uh, airport. And if you, the first time you see this map, you may feel that uh, this, this, the plane does not seem to be moving. But if you look more carefully uh, about this map for a few more minutes, you will realize that India is not moving. <laughs> I, I, have, I, I was waiting like, for one hour. <laughs> prepare a, a nicer example other than Arnold 100. <laughs> I hope you can accept that. Excuse. So, you can also color, color the states using uh, different colors. So the, the, the function calls are also very simple. And uh, lastly, just one comment about R graphics and JavaScript visualizations. When you, when you see our graphics, they often seem to be very interesting. It's probably a picture is not very clear to you. But after a while, you say, ah, this is, the R graphics seems to be very boring. <laughs> but after you visualize your data using JavaScript, then your audience will be like this. <laughs> no, matter, no matter how awesome you are, there will always be a guy sleeping in the <laughs> How do you uh, manage a widget version if um, they deprecate certain uh, functionality? Uh, the widget version? So that's, uh, I'm not sure if I should uh, show you the source code of the, the slides. It would be a little bit scary. But anyway, so for all the widget packages, the version numbers will be in code, uh, will be included in in the in, in, in the JavaScript uh, like for for the uh, let's see. Yeah, for the leaflet package for the, R, the version for the R package is 0 0.0.9 so that's where we put the the version information of the the widget. Other questions? 
completely completely random. Uh, you were using the pipe notation in Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I assume you added some magic to it last night. Is that standard? Uh, the pipe yeah. op mm -hmm. this is uh, not not quite um, It's not directly related to to Shiny. You can use okay. this pipe operator everywhere. everywhere. The reason that we can use this operator is that the first argument of this oops, the first argument of this function will be uh, in this example will be a lift that object that we'll, we will modify. Okay, so you're not using like a separate package like pipe or something. Oh, it's the, yeah, it's just the macro package, yeah. For the data table package, um, is there a way to retrieve the current state of the table? So like if the user filtered some rows and did some kind of sorting with some of the columns, is there a way to get that snapshot rather than normal? Originally, uh, this question has been asked like a thousand times. Okay. <laughs> you can see there's a TBD in the documentation to be to be done. <laughs> 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 Can you show one of these widgets running in uh, the R console? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. I meant to show that. Uh, I forgot that. Yeah. If you just uh, use these packages in the R console, like, it, it will just pop up in the R Studio Viewer pane. It's just like, it's just like, for example, just like, some spots in, in the R console, you will see the plot will be shown in the plot pane. But if you use a widget, then it will be displayed in the R Studio Viewer. So this is just like, like a normal R plot. Yeah. So when you're using, uh, using it uh, in R markdown instead of the general R, and it actually renders all the data that is needed or that graph be self-contained so that it can be then sent off is encoded as a JavaScript object and bundled with the actual output so that I don't have to have an R uh, exactly. server yeah. Or yeah, it'll be completely self-contained. So like for example if we just uh, open an R markdown document and the uh, library DT and then data table. Sorry about Iris. <laughs> Then compile that to HTML. Then the, this, the, the output will be completely self-contained. So you can send this single file to your colleagues. Any other question? All right. Let's thank you.